Right, rolling. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today we're going to do a comparison video for you guys who are a little bit unsure on maybe what machine would suit your purposes the best. We've given you the choice of two what I would class as budget friendly options. Both have pros and cons. We will go over them in more depth. Stay tuned. Let's dive straight in. Right, so I shall start off with a cheaper option first out of the two, which is the Creality Ender 3 V3 KE model. This is one up from their really, really entry budget grade machine. For me, it's worth spending that little bit of extra to buy the KE because the added advantages to the KE over the SE model are quite significant for a very, very little price increase. So we have a build volume of 220, 220 by 240 on the Z. We have a maximum print speed claimed to be 500 millimeters a second. However, we wouldn't recommend printing at that speed. It would be typically 300 millimeters a second to get decent enough quality from the machine as demonstrated by our Flexi T-Rex. The nozzle temperature has a maximum temperature of 300 degrees. We have a build plate temperature maximum of 100 degrees C. We also have a flexible PEI build plate attached to this machine, which is magnetic. I shall demonstrate. So literally steel plate, magnet sheet. You've got little cutouts here and here. You've got little locating screws. So you literally slide the sheet to locate on the screws. Bosh. The KE also has a 4.3 inch touch screen display. We have the optional capability to add a camera should you choose to. I believe the Nebula camera, link for that will be in the description, fits this machine so you can remotely monitor your prints via that camera. You also have Wi-Fi capability via LAN or the cloud. So for those of you that use Creality Print, you can send the files straight from your slicer directly to the machine, start the machine remotely from your PC or laptop. We also have external spool holder with a separate filament runout sensor. Price point for this machine currently is £199. So it's not a lot of money for what we'd class as a capable machine. I mean, other little pros to this machine. We have got a linear rail on the Z-axis, which makes for a, a decent rigid platform. It stops you having to tinker and mess around with adjusting eccentric nuts on V wheels and all that type of stuff. It's got a direct drive extruder. It's also got a built in at the back of the machine here, a CR touch probe for auto bed leveling. We have done some videos on this in the past, so we will link to those in the description. But overall, it was Creality's attempt to replace the Ender series. They've shaved off some costs. You've got a plastic base, you've got a plastic rail at the top. It is the both lead screws are joined by a belt that are driven by one motor, but overall it performs. So for those of you who are looking to get your first 3D printer, this is definitely, definitely a worthy contender. But we shall step over to the high. This is the latest offering from Creality, which comparably they look very similar but they are very different. So this machine has a build volume of 260 millimeters by 260 millimeters by 300 millimeters on the Z. So the build volume is slightly bigger than the KE. We again have a very similar print speed, 500 millimeters a second maximum speed, but typically 300 millimeters a second as a general rule of thumb. Maximum nozzle temperature for this machine is 300 degrees C, the build plate again 100 degrees c we have a flexible epoxy build plate on this machine so i will pop it off again in simple terms it's not as textured as the pei but it has a very very supple texture which again for pla pet g and whatever else it's perfect no issues with that at all and this one locates on some little molded in brackets on the build plate so you push it back to those brackets snaps into place bosh done we also have a very, very swish 3.2 inch color touchscreen, which is swivelly. You can fold it out of the way. A nice little screen, very responsive. We haven't had any issues with that screen at all. We also have a built-in camera, which is hidden here. There is a little lens cover on it, so you can close it or open it, but 
you have the capability built in straight to the machine to remotely monitor prints via that camera. You also have Wi-Fi connection via LAN or the cloud again. And the filament runout sensor on this machine is not built into the, the spool holder or separate. It's actually cleverly tucked away inside the extruder. Now, this machine has some added benefits because you can also get this in a combo version, which will allow you to hook up a CFS unit to it if you decided to purchase one later on or buy it as a bundle combo. So then you can print multiple color prints. So here we have a very, very dusty CFS unit because Chris is a bad man and cleans nothing. That's a joke, he does. Typically, it's plastic, it, very static, it just collects dust. So CFS unit, very nice machine, very user-friendly. This will hold four spools of filament. The front lights up like a Christmas tree when it's powered up. We have got a full overview of this machine singularly with the CFS unit on another video, so we will link to that also in the description. But just want to clarify, the stock bare bones Corality High does not come with a buffer that is stuck to the side. This you get with the actual CFS unit. So you'll then stick it to the machine. We obviously use the two, hence to why we have it fitted. But if you were just buying the bare machine, you haven't got the buffer fitted on the side, but everything else is identical, literally everything. Just one other tip while I'm on the subject. If you want to print with TPU or TPE on this machine, you can't print it from the CFS unit because the material is too soft and flexible. This is why we have the external spool holder as well. So if you're printing TPU or TPE and you have the combo, you will have to print it via the external spool holder and literally just run it through the tube as we have here, straight into the extruder. You are golden. Right, continuity. So this is the CFS unit. This is also available separately on the website. Link to that also will be in the description. If you don't want to purchase these in one go, you can purchase them both separately as and when you need. So I shall move this out of the way. The build quality, I would say in my opinion, is better than the KE. Again, you've got a very, very nice linear rail mounted on the underside of the gantry, opposed to on top of the gantry. You've got nice, solid cast aluminium parts all round, all be joined by a very, very rigid plastic brace across the top. You've got inside here, the lead screws nicely tucked away. It just looks more polished, more refined, and in my opinion, just a little bit better quality. And really, for an extra 69 quid, so this currently on its own as a standalone machine is £269 on the website, is a bargain. And in terms of upgradability and whatever else, this will be the one to get, in my opinion. It's a decent looking machine. It's the latest offering. It's upgradable. It's got a slightly bigger build volume. And if you added up all the little bits of extra bump that you get with it, i.e. the camera and whatever else. By the time you added a Nebula camera to the KE and whatever other bits and pieces, you're not gonna be far off the price of this anyway. Have it all tucked away in one nice, neat unit. Give this one a look. We've used both of these machines now. Obviously, the KE we've used for a lot longer. They are very, very user-friendly, especially for beginners. They're pretty much plug and play, minimal assembly on either of the machines. If you're using Corality Print, other slices are available, of course. If you're a beginner and you're using Corality Print, the profiles for either one of these are very well tuned now. So you don't have to tweak with anything. You literally select your filament, material type, generic PET G, PLA, whatever, whatever you're using. Slice your file, send it to the printer, and it prints. A couple of little tweaks that I do suggest people make with this one, but in the slicer, the Z-Hop was a problem. In my opinion, it was set a fraction too low for out of the box printing. So what would happen is the nozzle would move to the next part of the print and it would collide with the print because the nozzle wasn't traveling up high enough before it made its movement. Adjust the Z-hop in the, in the slicer settings by a couple of millimeters is plenty. And that alleviates that issue. The print was becoming dislodged, then sticking to the nozzle and causing the nozzle of doom, the blob of death, whatever you want to call it. Basically, print sticks to the nozzle, the filament hasn't got anywhere to go, so it basically encases all of your extruder in plastic. Then it cools off, goes rock hard, extruder, toast. The toast? Then you don't want that. If you follow the steps that I've just pointed out, you will not have that issue. The other key aspect to that point will be to always ensure you've got a clean build plate. Now you might look at it and say, yeah, 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 my build plate's clean. 
I can tell you now, it probably isn't. Your finger, your fingers, secretes grease. Grease sticks to the build plate. You can't see that grease, but it is there. What this does is it puts a barrier between the build plate and the filament, thus not allowing the filament to stick to the build plate. So the prints come off. Give your build plates a good scrub with some warm soapy water, some IPA, whatever your chosen fancy is, but just make sure they're kept clean. Then bed addition will not be an issue. It's always a good habit to get into, you know, periodically, maybe every other print. Take it off, give it a good clean, pop it back on. Try and make sure that you don't manhandle the build plate, use the tabs, and then that keeps the printing area nice and fresh. Another thing that I'll say to anybody that's new into 3D printing, always watch your first layer complete and go down. Typically, if you can ensure that you've got a decent foundation for your print, you're pretty much good to go that the rest of the print will be absolutely fine. A few exceptions to this are, don't have your printer near an open window, don't have your printer near a fan. Anything that's gonna prematurely cool the print will cause the print to warp, even with PLA, and that's where you start to get prints lifting off the plate. So keep it out of a drafty area, keep the build plate clean, adjust your Z-hop so you've got a little bit of extra height before you actually travel. It will increase the print time very, very fractionally, but for me, I'd rather add five minutes overall to my print time and have a successful print than come back to a bed of spaghetti. Chris has basically sliced and printed both these models. Same filament, it's our own brand Bio PLA. So this is made with algae or algae extracts. Both sliced in quality print, both printed with gyroid infill, a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Very, very hard pressed to see any difference in, in the actual print quality. That to me is a hot seller and I can't understand why we haven't sold out of this machine because to me it's a very, very, very decent machine. Overall, I mean, I mean there is nothing really in it that will stand out. Obviously because we've sliced them in the same slicer with the same settings or whatever else. The, the Z seam or whatever is in exactly the same place. There's no real difference in the layer line quality or, or anything else. But overall, they are both very comparable. So print, in terms of print quality, they're pretty much the same. Again, it's more for me about the, the actual machine build quality and the upgradability. So like I say, CFS unit for this one, you wouldn't be able to fit the CFS unit to this. So if you have any questions on either of these machines or anything else that I've talked about in the video, please drop it in the comments box below. Yeah, from me, that's it. I'm out of here. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye for now. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.